All right, you guys, welcome back to another lesson here. In this lesson today, we're going to be talking about some of the additional settings and functions of the temporary pacemaker. In the last lesson, we talked about some of the different modes, as well as the basic settings that are really essential to understand when you're taking care of a patient with a temporary pacemaker. But I did want to cover a few other things that are really good to understand, which is what I'm going to be covering in this lesson here. And so let's go ahead and get started. All right, real quick before we begin, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson and this is ICU Advantage, where I'm giving you the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking complex critical care topics and breaking them down, making them easy to understand. Now my goal in creating this YouTube channel was to try and provide some of the best online and really free critical care educational content out there. And so if you'd be interested in getting more of these lessons, then make sure and subscribe to the channel down below. When you do, make sure you hit that bell icon though and select all notifications. That way you never miss out when I release a new lesson. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started here. Now, the first thing that I wanna cover real quick are some settings that really kind of relate to the atrium versus the ventricle. And the first is just to draw attention to our indicator lights. And these lights are the lights that basically give us indication that the pacemaker is either pacing or sensing the intrinsic rhythm. To illustrate this, here's a quick picture of the top of uh, an example of a Medtronic dual chamber pacemaker. Now up at the very top of the main display, you can see that we have an indicator for pace and sense. And each one actually lights up in its own color. Now if you're using a single chamber pacemaker, you're just gonna have two lights, one for pace, one for sense. But in the case of the dual chamber pacemakers, you're actually gonna have one of each for each of the chambers, both the atrium and the ventricle. These lights are very important, especially when we get into troubleshooting to kind of pay attention to and compare up against the rhythm that you see on the ECG to help you try and figure out what's going on with the pacemaker. And the other thing that I want to talk about is our output and sensitivity. And it's important to know that the atrium and the ventricle actually have separate output and sensitivity settings. And these settings are going to be higher in the ventricle. Now, when looking at the output for the atrium, at least when we're working on the Medtronic pacemaker, we're gonna have an output that ranges from 0.1 to 20, and then on the ventricle, it's gonna range from 0.1 to 25 milliamps. And then looking at the sensitivity for the atrium, we're gonna go from 0.4 to 10 millivolts versus for the ventricle, 0.8 to 20 millivolts. Hopefully intuitively this makes more sense because both from an output standpoint and as far as sensitivity, so what kind of signal are we gonna have coming in, the atrium being a smaller chamber, less muscle, it makes sense that we're gonna have smaller output settings and smaller sensitivity settings compared to the large muscle-filled ventricle. All right, moving on from here. Next, we're actually gonna talk about some rate-dependent parameters. And you might be wondering, what the heck does that even mean? And essentially these are different settings and parameters that we have that we can adjust that based on what we have these parameters set at, that that directly could either conflict or impact based on the rate that we have the patient going. So let me try to explain this a little bit more, hopefully it'll make more sense. All right, the first of these rate dependent parameters is gonna be what we call our AV interval. And this is essentially the amount of time in milliseconds from an atrial pace until we have the delivery of a ventricular pulse. You can really kind of think of this as the PR interval. Now the thing with these rate dependent parameters is there's actually a couple different ways that they can be set. And it depends on if we have the pacemaker set for these in automatic mode or manual mode, which I'll talk about a little bit more here in just a minute. But the timing for our AV interval, if we're in manual mode, is gonna be anywhere from 20 to 300 milliseconds. And then if it's set in automatic mode, this is gonna range from 50 to 250 milliseconds. So you can see you have more flexibility when you're in manual mode versus automatic. And again, the time here, think about from the time that we deliver an atrial paste beat, this is how many milliseconds until we're gonna deliver that ventricular paste beat. One of the things I talked about in the last lesson was if we actually have an intrinsic atrial beat, we're still gonna wait a period of time to see if there's an intrinsic ventricular contraction. If not, then we're still gonna provide, depending on the mode that you're in, we're still potentially gonna provide in dual chamber pacemaking a ventricular paced beat. 
The timing for this is a little bit different and we don't get to directly control this. This is based on what our AV interval is, but for sensed atrial events, the interval is going to be automatically 30 milliseconds less than what we have the AV interval set at. The other thing to know that's really important to this is after a paced atrial event, there's going to be what we refer to as a blanking period for the ventricular sensing. And this is really to avoid sensing that atrial pulse that we just delivered. The reason this is important to know is that if we actually have our AV interval set to less than 50 milliseconds, which if you remember is the minimum amount that it will go to in automatic mode, that because of this blanking period, there's a chance that we could actually miss sensing an intrinsic ventricular beat. All right, moving on, uh, the next parameter that we're going to talk about is something that we call PVARP, which stands for postventricular atrial refractory period. So that one was obviously a mouthful, but essentially this is the amount of time, again in milliseconds, after a ventricular beat when the atrial sensing isn't going to impact the pacer timing. So to say that a little bit different, this is the time after a ventricular contraction when we're just not going to respond to any atrial events that are sensed. We want to be able to provide enough time after a contraction before we begin pacing again. And really the whole point of this is to prevent the detection of the ventricular beats in the atrium, which sometimes can happen. Now this setting we can manually adjust anywhere from 150 to 500 milliseconds. But similarly to the AV interval, if we manually set the PVARP to 150 milliseconds, then atrial events may not be sensed due to, again, this blanking period following that ventricular paced event. And then finally, the last rate dependent parameter that I want to talk about is something that we call the upper limit. And this is essentially the max allowed ventricular pacing rate when we're tracking the atrium. So again, when we're in a dual chamber pacing situation, this is going to be the fastest that we allow the ventricle to be paced no matter how fast the atrium is going. This is our limit. And so this is only going to be something that you can set when we're in a DDD mode of pacing. Hopefully that makes sense. Think of the response to that atrial sensed event where we're going to inhibit the atrium but then trigger the ventricle. We have to have that going on if we even want to consider setting a limit to how fast that maximum amount that we want to allow that to happen at. Now here in manual mode, we can set this anywhere from 80 to 230 paced beats per minute. Or if you're set in automatic mode, this is going to range from 110 to 230 paced beats per minute. So again, it's important to know that normally the pacemaker is going to be in this automatic mode, and therefore these settings are going to be automatically adjusted based on whatever we set the paced rate at. But it's important to know that when you have it in manual mode, when you make changes to the rate, this is not going to make changes to these settings. And the reason this is important to know is that this can lead to something that we call timing violations that are going to require you to make either adjustments to the upper limit and or the AV interval and PVARP. To give you some intuition on this, hopefully this makes sense because I talked about this before that when we talk about setting the rate on the pacemaker, that we're not just looking at how many beats per minute. It's actually a timing interval that goes from one beat to the next beat. The faster your rate goes, the shorter the interval that it has between beats. And so as you can see with the AV interval and the PVARP, that these are periods of time. And one full timing cycle of a rhythm is going to be your AV interval plus your PVARP. So the time from an atrial paced beat until the ventricle goes is our AV interval, which then is followed up by our postventricular atrial refractory period once a ventricular beat goes. If we start to shorten the interval between paced beats and that ends up shorter than that total cycle time, this is where one example of where we're going to have a timing violation. So with all that said, I will say that at least personally, I've never had to make any changes to these rate dependent parameters. Keeping the pacemaker in automatic mode has been something that has worked out for the patients that I have seen. That said, that's just anecdotally on my own experience. So depending where you work or what your situation is, there might be situations where you need to make adjustments to these settings. And that's why I wanted to kind of cover these and give you an understanding of what they are, what they're for, and some of the basic issues that can come up when you're adjusting some of these. All right, so let's move on from here and let's actually talk about a couple of our atrial settings. 
The first of these settings that you'll see is something called A tracking, which is just shorthand for atrial tracking. And this is a setting that is only used when we're sensing and pacing in both chambers. And we can either have this setting on or off. When the setting's on, this means that you're in the mode DDD. Our ventricular pacing is normally going to be tracking the atrial intrinsic rate. A sensed atrial beat is going to inhibit our atrial pacing, and then it's going to trigger that AV interval that we just talked about, which, if we reach the end of that, we're then going to provide a paced ventricular beat. Now, if we turn this A tracking off from DDD mode, this is actually going to flip us into the mode DDI. So again, think that we're inhibiting atrial pacing, but we're not triggering any AV interval and thus ultimately potentially a ventricular rhythm. So we're not going to be tracking the atrial rhythm and we're only going to be pacing the ventricle at the set rate. This is important in cases where we have patients who have atrial arrhythmias, things like AFib. The other atrial setting that I want to talk about is something that we call rapid atrial pacing or RAP. And this is actually going to allow us to pace the atrium at rates anywhere from 80, which really isn't that rapid, all the way up to 800. The reason that we have this setting is that we can use this to try and interrupt a rapid atrial rhythm that our patient might have. Now this is something that we can initiate from any mode that the pacer is currently operating in that in order to run at this rapid rate, you are gonna to have to hold the button the entire time that you wanna deliver this, but while the button's held, you can still adjust the rate. So you'll set that rate beforehand, you'll hold the button to deliver the rapid atrial pacing, but then while it's held down, you can still adjust the dial in order to fine tune the rate that you want. The absolutely imperative thing when running rapid atrial pacing is to ensure that you have the atrial leads connected to the atrium on the pacemaker and not the ventricle. As you can imagine, if we tried to pace the ventricular at four or 500 beats a minute, this is not gonna be good. So those are our atrial settings. And then finally, the last thing that I wanna talk about here is gonna be our emergency pacing. So hitting the emergency button, this is going to be a high output asynchronous dual chamber pacing mode. This is going to be our DOO mode. So again, remember that we're not going to be doing any sensing here. This is when you just rapidly need to begin just delivering pacing impulses to your patient. And so you're probably not going to be doing this when they have an underlying rhythm. The beauty of this is it can be used anytime, whether the device is on or even off, or whether the screen is locked or not locked. When you hit this button, it's gonna default to 80 paced beats per minute at the maximum output. So again, 20 for the atrium and 25 for the ventricle. To exit from this emergency DOO mode, you can either press enter on the Medtronic pacemaker or select a mode from the menu and this will trigger it to, to go out of this mode. All right, so those were some of the additional settings that we didn't quite cover in the last lesson. Some of them are going to be things that you're going to use more often than not, but again, it is helpful to have a good understanding of some of this stuff, what it's for, why you might use it, and how ultimately it's going to impact your patient. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this lesson. If you did, go down, leave a like, uh, give me a comment, let me know what you thought of the lesson, as well as, like I said, make sure and share this with anybody who you think might find this lesson useful. As always, a special shout out to our awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you guys are willing to offer me is greatly appreciated and really is going to go a long way to help to improve this channel here. Now, if the rest of you guys would be interested in seeing additional ways that you can support this channel, as well as to see some of the benefits that you get for doing so, you can either join the YouTube channel down below or head on over to the Patreon page to, to take a look at some of the perks that we have over there. You can also support this channel through the merchandise down below or following some of the links in the lesson description. Make sure and stay tuned for the last lesson in this temporary pacemaking series. Otherwise, in the meantime, though, check out a couple really awesome lessons that I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.